Good morning, my sister and brother. Trusting that you are doing well. Trusting that you are doing well. Well, happy. What is the day? Can you believe it? It's Thursday already. Time is going by so fast. When you having fun. Yes, when you having fun, time goes by so fast. Or even if you're not having fun, right? Time still goes by. So my sister and brother, this is Berger Warrior from Living Waters Movement, where I help women who are passionate about prayer to start and launch their very own global prayer ministry. So I hope that you are doing well. And if for those of you that purchased my book, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And for those of you that would like a copy of my book, you can go to bit.ly backslash spiritual warfare 21. So may I ask you, did you take time out to study, study, study? Remember, we must study. We must, must, must. And we know it is so late on planet Earth. And the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stayed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have woke us up, Father God, clothed us in our right mind, Father God, to do what you have called us to do, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Father God, right now, I ask you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take, take full control. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, scripture reading is coming from... Luke chapter 11, verses 57. Luke 11, verses 57. And it reads, Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Mm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So we are in the topic, and we are, you know what? We want the truth and nothing but the truth, right? We want the truth, 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 truth. And my sister and brother, the truth will set you free. And the only truth we're talking about, the Bible truth, right? That's where we find our truth. And so this is Jesus hunted from city to city during his ministry. So if that happened to our Savior, and he was our example, what do you think will happen to us? I am talking to the ones that are uh, decided to keep all of the commandments of God, all of the commandments of God, you know, all of it, all of it. So it says here, Jesus hunted from city to city during his ministry. Jesus was hunted from place to place during his ministry. Priests and rulers were on his track. They misrepresented his mission and labor. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Angels watched the conflict at every step. They saw the spirit and the work of the enemy. They looked with amazement upon the, ad, upon the devices of Satan against the divine Son of God. They saw that he who had only been second to Jesus in the power and glory had fallen so low that he could influence men to hunt the steps of Christ from city to city. Again and again, he, Jesus, could have been killed had it not been for the heavenly angels who attended him and guarded his life until the time when the case of the Jews as a nation should be decided. So that concludes my topic, my sister and brother. Jesus hunted from city to city during his ministry. Remember, we just, in, in the as we're doing this, the truth about angels is just telling you, we are just talking about the part that angels took within the ministry of Jesus Christ. Okay, within the ministry of the Bible, the part that angels played. Because sometimes we think about, you know, what did angels do? What did they do? What did they do? So we know that they did something, right? Because I remember back in the day, there was um, a TV series, Touched by an Angel. And, you know, they brought all that weird stuff in there. And it's like, that's not what we're talking about here, my sister and brother. We're talking about the Bible story, the Bible, the Bible. We want to get all their truth from the Bible, from the Holy Word of God. This is where we get our truth. Anything that comes from Hollywood has to be some type of deception in there because that's that's what sells. 
deception cell drama cells right drama cell and they have to dramatize it and all this other stuff but we're not talking about that kind of angels we're talking about the true angels of god okay so on tomorrow friday preparation day we're going to go into actually we're going to do a review of the good and evil angels during christ's ministry the good and evil angels during Christ's ministry. And you know that there are good and evil angels here. Remember, one third of the angels, along with Lucifer, decided to disobey God and they were cast out of heaven. But remember, Satan was cast out of heaven, but he still has his power. Okay? Still have his power. So we have good angels and we also have evil angels. So we got to be very mindful of what spirit are we feeding moment by moment. Don't think about the end of the day. That's too long, too long. Moment by moment, examine yourself and see where you stand in the presence of God. Remember, we are in the judgment hour. We have to be very mindful of everything we do. Think whatever we eat. We got to be very mindful of what we put into our body. We got to be very mindful of the clothing that we wear. We got to be so mindful of the what we studying, what we watching, what comes out of our mouth. Everything, my sister, my brother, we have to be so mindful because there's someone always watching. And remember, we got angels that's taking notes. We got angels that's taking notes. Hey, Clark David. Oh, my brother. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I I, I go to uh, Honda looking for you, but then I remember you retired. So I'm hoping that you're jo enjoying, enjoying your retirement. And it's so good to see you. I miss your smiling face, your energy. So thank you so much for stopping by. So with that, my sister and brother, so may I share with you my devotion? Okay, so we are going into... The Spirit leads us to become God's children. The Spirit leads us to become God's children. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, there are the sons of God. And this is coming from Romans chapter 8, verses 14. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to continue to allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. Father God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so it's stayed here. Christ took his stand amongst men as the auditors of God. He spoke as one having authority, addressing himself in strong terms to the people and demanding implicit faith and obedience. We as a people have based our faith upon the principles set forth in his words. We have pledged ourselves to bring heart and mind to obedience to the living word and to follow a thus said the Lord. Did you hear what I said? Thus said the Lord. It's not about what the government said, but thus said the Lord. It's not what Burdell said, but thus said the Lord. All our present and future hope depends upon our kinship with Christ and with God. The Apostle Paul speaks strong words to confirm our faith in his respect to those who are led by the spirit of god in whom's heart the grace of christ is dwelling he declares the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of god and if children then ear ear of god and joint ear with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. And this is coming from Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again for fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And this is verses 15. We are called by Christ to come out from the world and be separate. Mm. Let me repeat that. We are called by Christ to come out from the world and to be separate. We are called to live holy lives, having our hearts continually drawing out to God and having in our lives the Holy Spirit as an abiding presence. 
Every true believer in Christ will reveal that the grace of his love is in the heart. Where once there was entanglement from God, Let me go and repeat that. Once there was entanglement from God, there will be a re revealing co-partnership with him. Where once the carnal nature was, man was manifest, there will be seen the attributes of the divine. His people are to become workers of righteousness, constant searchers after God, constant workers of his will. This will make them complete in Christ. To the angels and to men and to the worlds unfallen, they are, they are to make it manifest that their lives are confirming to the will of God, that they are loyal adherents to the principle of his kingdom. The Holy Spirit dwells, the Holy Spirit dwelling in their hearts by faith will bring them into fellowship with Christ and with one another and will yield in them the precious fruit of holiness. Let me repeat this. The Holy Spirit dwelling in their hearts by faith and, and will, bring, will bring into fellowship with Christ and with one another and will yield in them the precious fruit of holiness. So that concludes my devotion, my sister, my brother. The Spirit leads us to become God's children. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to the God on, in the highest and on earth. Peace, good will towards men. Okay, so here is my closing, 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 closing hymn. And it says, I do believe. Mm. It's not. I do believe. And it says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou wilt draw thyself from me, ah, oh, whither shall I go? On thy dear son I now believe. Oh, let me feel thy power and all thy variants want relief in this accepted hour. Author of faith, to thee I lift my weary, longing eyes. Oh, let me now receive that gift. My soul without it dies. Surely thou, cannot, thou canst not let me die or speak, and I shall live. Okay, and here I will unwary lie, and here I will unwary lie, till thou thy spirit give. How would my fainting soul rejoice? How could I but see thy face? Now let me hear thy quickening voice and taste thy pardoning grace. Here's the last verse. I do believe, I now believe that Jesus died for me and that he shed his precious blood from sin to set me free. Let me repeat the last verse. I do believe, I now believe that Jesus died for me and that he shed his precious blood from sin to set me free. Mm, I do believe, I do believe. So my sister and brother, so if we believe the whole Bible, the whole Bible, the whole Bible, nothing but the word of God. If we believe the word of God, my sister and my brother, God says, if you love me, he says, if, 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 if you love me, keep my commandments. And he's referring to all of the commandments. Most churches keep nine, 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 but to forget the one. And that is the fourth commandment. He said, Exodus 20 verses eight through 11 state, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God said he gave us six days, six days to do whatever you want to do. But he asked you for one that day, one day, one day, one day. And that day always from the beginning of creation, before the Jews got here, from the beginning of creation, God set aside a day. And it was the Sabbath day. And that was always Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. There's no way, no place 
in this book, in the Bible, in the Bible, that you will find that God told us to worship him on Sunday. No way, no, no place, no place, no place. There's no scripture that you can give that will, 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 um, will state why are you going to church on Sunday? God says, Saturday, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why did he put remember in there? Because he knew there was coming a time that people was going to forget that his people that he loved so much was going to forget about what day. He says Saturday. Men says Sunday. Satan says Sunday. Man, God said, my sister, the final battle of earth history is going to be about worship. And we are in the dress rehearsal right now. You can feel the birthing pain coming as the woman is about to give birth. So it is right now, my sister and brother. We are in the dress rehearsal. Man says Sunday. God says Saturday. So who do you, who are you going to believe? God gave you all the, how would you say, all the scripture there is to state Worship me on Saturday. It was never Sunday. So you can go ahead to my uncle Google and Google who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Who changed it? And that will be the system, the system. I'm not talking about the people. God's got children in all the different churches, but he is calling them out of Babylon. You know, uh, ex, um, Revelation 14 verses 6 through, I believe, 12, talks about Babylon is falling. So God is calling his children out of that false system to come back under his banner. And the, the God says, you know what? This is my day. I put a stamp on it, and that is the day. And you know what? We're going to be celebrating Sabbath from this point all the way to eternity. So don't you think it will be time for individual to come back to the original day that God set? It was always Saturday. Do your own research. And let me give you some more info, give you some more um, things that you can go ahead and Google. Go to sabbathtruth.org, sabbathtruth.org, and you'll find a wealth of information that give you scripture uh, that you can know without a shadow of a doubt that God was always, Sabbath was always Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. It was never Sunday. And then you can also go to sabbath.org sabbath.org and you'll find a wealth of information there my sister and brother but then uh, then again you can also look at luke chapter 23 it looked like the like the last couple of verses like maybe like 51 when it talks about you know it was the sabbath day you know jesus was crucified it was the uh was good friday remember he said he died on good friday right and then the women went to the grave to anoint the body, but the Sabbath drew on, so they came home, so they were not able to anoint the body. And the, the Bible continued to say, and they rested, he rested in the grave according to the Sabbath. And what day did he rose? He rose, he stayed on the first day of the week. So the first day of the week is what day? Ooh, what day is that? It's Sunday, right? Sunday is the first day. So Jesus rose the first day. So how if he rose the first day, but the Bible said he rested in the grave on the Sabbath and he rose on first day. So then how can it be that Sunday is the Sabbath? Mm. It's a deception, right? And we know there's two forces. You're either going to do what God says or you're going to do what Satan said. But he also stayed, right? If you love me, my sister, my brother, keep my commandment. I gave you everything. I gave you my son. He died to set you free. And all I'm asking you is to acknowledge that I am God. I am the creator of the universe. I ask you to worship me on that one day. And that will be the deciding um, force um, to state that this is what God required me to do Saturday. It was never Sunday. And that will be the deciding factor whether you are going to make it into the kingdom because then are you going to be total obedience to God regardless of what man says or you're going to be a go against God and just do what you want to do or do what the world stating Sunday 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 was never the day my sister and brother never 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 so 
So what say you? you? I gave you all the information and you could do your search, do your search. But here's the thing. A lot of people today just want information, 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 but they do not want to do their own research. As God's children, we have to be thinking people. We have to go and do our research ourselves. God says, I have treasures. I have golden nuggets in the word. But only way you're going to get this golden nuggets, you've got to go and search for them. All right? Search for them. And it's all there, my sister and brother. So I hope and pray, my sister and my brother, that you have made your calling and election sure, standing on the winning team. From Genesis to Revelation, the plan of redemption, we know the story. Jesus wins in the end. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. I thank you. I do believe, Father God. I do believe, I do believe, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you have given us another opportunity, Father God, to get our lives in order. Father God, if we have done or said anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow, Father God. And once you have done that, Father God, we give you permission, Father God, to take these empty vessels. Use us, mold us into what, use us and mold us into what you want us to be, Father God. And at the end, Father God, we will continue to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we thank you, Father God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so thank you so much for stopping by. So can you do me a favor? So if you um, got maybe one nugget, maybe two nuggets, can you do me a favor? Can you just hit the like button, make a comment, hit the share button. Remember, sharing is caring. Then you can follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And I thank you so much for going over there, for helping me grow my YouTube channel. And also, if you want to support my ministry, I've got a book that you can purchase, and it's uh, it's a prayer journal, a 30-day prayer and scripture journal. And you can find it at bit.ly backslash spiritual warfare 21. And while you're there, you can purchase the book and then you also will get a free ebook as well. So thank you so much, my sister and brother, for taking the time out of your business schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you. May he overflow your cup with his abundance today. But before you go, before you go, may I have a hug? I tell you, there's nothing like a hug. There's nothing like a hug. So here we go. One, two, one more, three. Oh, I'm changing mine. <laughs> Four. Thank you so much, my sister and brother. I love you. I love you. I love you. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you, Clark. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. I, I really miss seeing you when I go to the uh, car, sh car dealership. Uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate you. Continue. Enjoy your retirement, my brother. And uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you. So until tomorrow, we're going to do a review, a review of uh, chapter 15. And it's a review of good and evil angels during Christ's ministry. That is what we're going to cover tomorrow. Until then, be blessed, my sister, my brother. And I love you, love you. So till tomorrow, talk to you guys soon. Take care.